Well, what do you know? We said we're going to take a couple of days off. Ryan's probably looking at his phone, and as I'm texting him, emergency pod, and he's like, nah, I don't know, man. And then we put a tweet out, and like I think we got close to 300 people that want to watch an emergency John Brown, Odell Beckham Jr. Bill's podcast on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. You just put up a story on it. Yeah. And it is absolutely taking off. This is the Shout Buffalo Bills football podcast emergency edition. A lot of moves today, a lot of things to kind of dive into here on fi- in 15 to 20 minutes. As always, we're brought to you by Top Friendly Markets. You can win a uh, million dollars right now. Kings Hawaiian is pitting two city sliders against each other in the ultimate showdown, and you get to help decide the winner. Vote weekly for your favorite regional slider for a chance to win all season long and earn entries toward the $1 million prize. Explore the interactive stadium to play games, get recipes, share photos, and more. Topsmarkets.com slash red zone to enter. Ryan, the smoke is back in town. Why don't you tell everybody what everybody's talking about right now on Bill's Twitter? Yeah, so the Bills sent out their transaction tweet. They do that once a weekend, generally, when they make some moves or throughout the week, and uh, lo and behold, one of the first names on the list is Bills sign wide receiver John Brown to practice squad. And, you know, I don't know about you, Matt, but I had to do a double take and, and look at that again. I'm like, wait a minute, John Brown, the John Brown that was with the Bills from 20, <laughs> you know, 2019, 2020. And sure enough, it is that John Brown, 32 year old wide receiver who went over a thousand yards in his first year in Buffalo. Uh, really helped with Josh Allen's development. Allen called him an all-time teammate. I have a quote from Allen uh, in the article up on the site from their time together. So it, it's an interesting move. You know, we're, we're going to talk about it here in the next 15 to 20 minutes in terms of what it means. Uh, but with the injuries that the Bills currently have at wide receiver, with the other receivers that they have on their practice squad, it, it's definitely a juicy little nugget to talk about, Matt. If you hear like noise in the background, apologies. It is family party day here at uh, Casa de Perino. So the little girl, the little kids are playing out there. We got all the little cousins in town. They're playing. It's going to be a bit of an ambiance. It's added to the show. I apologize uh, ahead of time, but the John Brown move is, is a couple things to me. Number one, Kennedy, Kennedy, I'm doing a show. So can you, um, what you're going to take the garbage out? Oh, I will. I'll be right up to take it out. Okay, dear. <laughs> it's crazy over here. It's bedlam. Um, hey. It's a couple things for me. The, the Brown move. Number one, the Bills like having guys that have been in their system, right? Now, it's an interesting move because John Brown's been out of football, basically, for the past year. He had only 24 snaps combined with four different stops last year, Ryan. And crazy enough, he had five snaps in the divisional round playoff game for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Didn't have a catch. Uh, I don't believe it. I had to bring up the, the stats to look at it again. But he just didn't play a lot last year. He's been a free agent this entire time. But for me, this is a move filling the need that arose from Isaiah Hodgins getting plucked off the practice squad a couple of weeks ago by the New York Giants. He was a guy that had been in the system for a lot of years. Tanner Gentry has been as well, and he's been elevated a couple of times, but they've used Tanner Gentry's elevation, so they needed to get somebody right. else into the pipeline. John Brown's a type of situation where he knows the, the scheme. It's, it's very similar to what it was under Brian Dable, and you could throw him out there in a playoff game or a late December game and get the most out of him in a, in a, um, a shortened amount of time. The problem for John Brown always, and it's going to be here at 32 years old, is he couldn't really stay healthy. So now – this is a situation where they don't need a ton from him. They just need him to be ready in case they need him. For me, this does not deaden the Odell Beckham Jr. to the Bills conversation. I still think the Bills can find their way into the mix there because they want to add as much talent around Josh Allen as possible. Um, I, I don't think necessarily the two moves are intertwined. No, not at all. And, you know, first and foremost with John Brown, I can't believe I'm saying this, man. And I, I don't know what kind of playing shape he's in. I wouldn't be shocked if he was elevated on Thursday and that sounds insane, but look at the other wide receivers on the practice squad. You have Tanner Gentry who has been elevated twice. Now maybe Buffalo's plan is we're going to elevate him a third time on Thursday against the Patriots. But then after that, you have to release him or sign him to the main roster. Um, That might be their game plan with Gentry, but they've already elevated him twice. As you mentioned, then they have Keyshawn Johnson and Isaiah Coulter, two guys that don't have a lot of knowledge of the system. They were both signed during the season this year to the practice squad. 
So who's left? And, and it's John Brown, someone that is really familiar. And with the Bills only having four healthy receivers right now on their roster, they might need that fifth guy. So maybe it's not the Patriots game. Maybe Gentry gets the third elevation in a row, and then they have to decide what they're going to do with him after that point. But with the other options on this practice squad, Brown could see action sooner rather than later. And you got to keep your eye on the IR as well. Marquez Stevenson uh, could come back here in the near future. Jake Kumaro is back on it recently, so he still has a few more weeks to serve. But the Bills just need some bodies. that They're very banged up across the board. I mean, we've talked about it all season, how the bad luck with injuries. But at wide receiver, they're down to just four healthy bodies on this 53-man roster. Uh, so Brown could play sooner rather than later. In terms of Odell Beckham Jr., these two move, this move has nothing to do with Odell Beckham Jr. Beckham Jr. has a visit lined up with the Bills, along with a visit lined up with the Giants and Cowboys. I believe it's going to go Giants, Bills, Cowboys in that order. Um, so they're, they're still interested. They're still going to try to work something out with Beckham Jr. if the interest is mutual. Uh, and, and obviously Beckham Jr., even though he's coming off of a, a second torn ACL in a short period of time, you know that he can still produce and still play at a high level when called upon. Um, so he's a, a guy that this has nothing to do with the John Brown move. Brown, though, in the short term, in these next few weeks, it would not shock me if he is elevated to the main roster, at least for one game. I mean, we just saw it with A.J. Klein last week, Ryan. I mean, he was on the roster for a week before they asked him to go out there and start a football game and play the majority of the snaps for their defense. They believe in guys that have been in the system, know the system. John Brown is a an absolute veteran in the, in the NFL. He can come in here, probably get his – you know, um, head around what the, you know, the system is. And it would be what a story it would be if he was activated for this game, because I think the last really big John Brown memory, there might've been one in 2020, um, but was that 2019, I believe it was game against Stefan Gilmore in new England when he absolutely put him in a blender for that touchdown. So I don't think that that's out of the realm of possibility. And it's something that, at this point, you're just trying to stack numbers. The numbers were really, really down after Hodgins was was gone. And obviously, Kumaro is dealing with something that could, you know, kind of stretch into even if he's able to return and start working back from that ankle. That's something that can maybe linger all season long. And so with him out of the mix, he was such a durable, versatile piece for them. To me, John Brown becomes that piece. Now, you could have a couple of things that you say about John Brown. Number one, he was never durable while he was here. So that's something that is always going to be a concern. But I don't think at the at the spot that he's going to be on the depth chart that that's a big concern. And the other part is, sure, there were some playoff games where he didn't have the best output. But this is a completely different team, a completely different offense. And I think if he's on the field at any point with Gabe Davis – and Stefan Diggs in any role that they figure for him. And I go back to thinking about the, the separation conversation. Like if you want to take John Brown as a player and put him, listen, he can win down the field. I'm not, I'm not taking any of that away from him, but just the veteran nature of his game. I think that he could probably replicate more of those slot types of situations for the bills. Uh, like Cole Beasley did uh, more so than Isaiah McKenzie. I think Isaiah McKenzie is almost like John Brown throwback, like what, what he used to do early in his career. So I'm very interested to get a chance to talk to John Brown tomorrow after practice, figure out how long the bills have been talking to him, because this is something that's been going back a couple of weeks. I'm sure he's already been in a playbook of some sort, and that would kind of give him a, a head start on what the week could look like for him and maybe the understanding of what the role that they'd want him to fill in the offense if there is one. Yeah, and, you know, John Brown in, in 2019, he started 15 games, went over 1,000 yards receiving, uh, was their number one receiver. 2020, he played in nine games, started in eight. Uh, so the production was not as strong, and then they cut ties with him after that season. Uh, cleared some cap space, made some moves to to kind of our, or cut him to make moves here in, in the following year. But Brown still has some speed. He is still a, a veteran that can you know run these routes. That has a rapport with Josh Allen. It's going to be interesting to see uh, how quickly he can get up to speed with this new system. There are new wrinkles with Ken Dorsey, but this is a low risk, high you know high reward type of signing where. Okay, if he has lost a step, if he does deal with an injury, who expected John Brown to do anything this year for the Bills? He wasn't even on my radar, Matt. But if he didn't come in here, be healthy for the stretch run of the season, help the Bills get back to health at wide receiver, 
as they wait for even a guy like Jamison Crowder, another play that could maybe make a pushback here soon after uh, an ankle injury from earlier in the year. Whatever the case may be, anything that they can get out of John Brown, even from a veteran leadership perspective in the locker room, it doesn't even have to be on the field output. It's a win for the Bills. It's a quality signing this late in the season where you can bring uh, someone that is an established receiver into the fold that already knows the system and has chemistry with your franchise quarterback. If you want to build chemistry with everybody in your family, head over to the Tops and check out the Christmas bonus program. It's underway right now. Shop at Tops and save $10 at all of your other favorite stores and restaurants. With over 25 gift cards to choose from, there's something for everyone on your list. And don't forget to treat yourself to some extra savings too. Save on great gifts like toys and games from GameStop or Toys R Us at Macy's. Great family dining at Applebee's or Buffalo Wild Wings. That new big screen TV you want from Best Buy and so much more just by shopping at Tops. For a complete list of available gift card savings visit topsmarkets.com slash christmas bonus all right another big move that comes in this um announcement today from the bills is christian benford going on ir uh which with the oblique injury that sean mcdermott said was week to week yesterday you kind of saw the writing on the wall there they add xavier ford uh xavier ford uh xavier rhodes Back into uh, the mix here. He's been elevated a couple of times. They couldn't do it again without having to release him. So now they get him on the roster. Leslie Frazier said yesterday, Ryan, that they were thrilled with what they saw in Tredavious White with his first game back. They think that they can give him even more snaps next week, but you probably see Xavier uh, Rhodes in some type of role, maybe um, with Dane Jackson or even maybe Kyrie Elam. Maybe they let Dane Jackson take a step back this week um, he's been under a little bit of scrutiny for his play over the last couple of weeks. He's a tough kid. We've talked about on the show yesterday, but maybe they allow, you know, some of the veterans to come in and play more Tredavious white Xavier Rhodes, and then obviously lean on their rookie first round pick. And I think that can be a good thing for Dane Jackson. Let him catch his breath. Let him, uh, not have to worry about playing hundred percent of the snaps. Xavier Rhodes, uh, is an established cornerback. He was, he's played some great football in his career with Minnesota he had an outstanding season with the Indianapolis Colts in a defense that is very similar to what the Bills run in terms of the zone coverage and the amount of zone coverage. So I'm excited to see what he can do with a bigger role here. But obviously, in an ideal world, you're going to have Trey White and you're going to have Kyrie Elam as your one-two punch at cornerback. That's your first-round pick in this year's draft and obviously your number one cornerback for the past several years. You're going to ease Trey White back in, so maybe Rhodes plays in that role uh, beside him and they, they alternate reps. Or he can play on the other side with Elam because Elam was also on a, a pitch count of sorts last game where they were bringing him back from an injury. So whatever the case may be, I like that as a top three with Dane Jackson also serving in a reserve role, uh, being able to maybe play 60 or 50 percent of the snaps rather than 100. That's going to benefit his game. Having another veteran voice in that locker room is going to benefit him as well. He's under a lot of scrutiny, and rightfully so. He's given up a lot of catches. He's really struggled as of late. But the development that he has seen since coming on to this Bills roster as a sixth-round pick, Matt, Bills fans have to remember that. He was a late day three pick. He's come to speed quickly in this system, enough where the Bills felt confident in him as arguably their number one cornerback early in the year with Benford and Elam kind of getting eased into the system. So struggles from a late day three pick, they're to be expected when you're a pseudo number one cornerback on this team. Now he's going to get bumped down to cornerback three, cornerback four, and that's probably a better role for him where he's going to feel more comfortable. He's going to be fresher because of the rep count. Uh, this can be a really good thing for Dane Jackson. Mm -hmm. For Elam, I'm so, um, what's the word? I don't know what the right play moving forward with him is because I think you want to see a bigger, greater sample size for him because it's been so good what he has been able to do. But from day one, he still hasn't get, been given the job over there to, to whoever was on the opposite side. We're going to rely on you for 60, 70 snaps. Go show us what you can do. That hasn't happened yet. And I almost think like if the ankle's okay, and that's another thing, like Leslie said, they didn't play him in the first half because they were worried about, you know, where he was and progressing from that injured ankle. But I think if this is, this is the kind of game where you, you lean on your best players. And if you think, you know, Xavier Rose, we only saw him for a little bit. He did a good job a couple weeks ago, but 
I have a sneaking sp- suspicion that rookie year at this point in the season, Kyer Elam is going to give you a better chance to deal with some of the playmakers on the New England Patriots side. And this is actually a good game for the Bills offense or defense to kind of, you know, get a uh, take a deep breath. I, I don't think you're worried about anybody on the outside. Uh, you know, Nelson Aguilar, uh, Jacoby Myers is a good player, but n- not the superstars they've been playing in recent weeks. Sure. And, you know, Devontae Parker's coming off of his best game as a Patriot, arguably, but y- you're right. There's no superstars. I think St. Brown is an emerging superstar. I think that Amari Cooper is one of the most underrated wide receivers in this league. And those that's just the, the past two weeks. Garrett Wilson is an up and coming uh, wide receiver that's going to quickly emerge as one of the better players in this league. So the Bills cornerbacks in, in the past three, four five weeks, they've, they've played against some really good receivers this week. You know, they're good players. Obviously, anyone that's in the NFL is a good player. But this is a step back from the type of wide receivers that they've been playing week in, week out as of late. So you're right. This is going to be a good thing for Kyir Elam, for Trey White as they ease him back. Rhodes, depending on the snap count that he gets to, uh, and obviously Dane Jackson. So it's important for the Bills to go into that Thursday night game, come up with their first win in the AFC East of the season. Uh, pretty much a must win in my opinion, especially, you know, not just to keep pace to try to get back into the driver's seat for the number one seed in the conference, but also, you know, to kind of uh, stay in that race to win the division for the third consecutive year, because Miami, uh, as much as their defense has their faults, they're, they're playing strong football and offense and they keep winning as well. Um, CJ Brewer uh, getting added to the practice squad for me that that's the only defensive line addition tells you a lot about what I think they think about where Greg Rousseau and AJ Epinesa are as they kind of get back from their injuries. Because if it's, if, if both of them have to be down again on Thursday, you're looking at Mike Love elevated again, and then Shaq Lawson uh, and Boogie Basham. And, and that's where you're, you're pretty much uh, going to be at, at the edge ed- rusher spot, the latest on Von Miller, touch on that quickly before we go. I put up a story on it a little while ago from uh, Jeremy Fowler today uh, of ESPN. He said that um, right now Von Miller is going to take a week, see where things are, and then hoping that it's the kind of injury that he can play on and put a brace on. And he's done it before and he's confident that he can do that. But there might be in a week here, Ryan, where doctors – you know, take a closer look at this thing at second, third opinions and that and that like tear, whatever it ends up being. I think it's at the MCL. Uh, don't quote me on that. I, I saw a report out there. I think it was um, Rappaport with that. Um, if the tear is large enough, shout out to bang, uh, banged up bills. Uh, Kyle Trimble on, on Twitter. He has done a great job. He put together a really comprehensive article that people can kind of go take a look at. It's linked in my story. If it's a significant enough tear, then it's one of those things where it doesn't matter what you want to do. You're probably going to have to have surgery. We're going to be out for an extended period of time. They're hoping for the best, but that's where we're at. It's kind of just a, a waiting game at this point. Yeah, that's exactly it. And, and if the knee brace scenario works out, that will really um, bode well for the Bills because they need Von Miller. Von Miller plays a big role for this team. Um, but as of this week, because he's already been ruled out for the Patriots game, maybe Epines is going to be ready. They never, I don't think they ever said high ankle sprain with him. His was just an ankle injury. So obviously a big difference between the two if it is just a regular ankle injury. Rousseau, maybe he, you know, he's a young kid. Those younger players heal faster, Matt. So maybe he's up to speed a little bit faster than that normal, generally three to four week time frame, closer to the four week though, and sometimes even longer than that. We just don't know where they're at in, in those regards, but hopefully at least one of those two guys will be good to go and that'll be your four-man rotation against the Patriots. Uh, I, I want to close on this. And if you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much. Impromptu, no schedule, yeah. emergency pod. You guys are awesome. We're up over 250 watching live between all the platforms. Uh, hit like and subscribe if you're on YouTube. It really helps us out as we continue to try to grow the channel. You know, it's interesting. I went and looked. It took a deeper dive on the numbers of Boogie Basham. Um, I mentioned this in my story a little bit. He had 65 snaps against uh, the Browns on su- last Sunday. And then on Thursday, Thanksgiving, he had 75 snaps um, uh, or 75 percent of the snaps. Excuse me. 65 percent against the Browns, 75 percent against the Lions. And he didn't generate one quarterback pressure, according to pro football reference. And I know you sit back and you're probably super disappointing with that as a Bills fan. Rightfully so. This is a second round draft pick who just got an opportunity. He's not seizing it. He's not taking advantage of it. But there's kind of like a a glimmer of hope that's that you can nestle into this whole thing is that 
it's really hard in this league, I think, to learn to become better when you're not having the opportunities to be on the field. And I think what this is going to do more than anything, it's going to force them to put Boogie on the field and they're going to say, go win, go figure it out. Work on all the stuff that you've been doing um, the last couple of weeks, the last couple of months, and try to figure out a formula of how to win. This week, Trent Brown is, he's a good player. Uh, he's a former uh, all pro, I believe maybe a second team all pro. He's a pro bowler. He's had his struggles at times. Uh, yeah. Isaiah wins struggled as well. He's been under a lot of duress there. So, uh, or, or a lot of pressure there, I should say. So this is a game where if, if you're the coaching staff, you, you, you empower Boogie Basham to go out there and make some impact plays. Um, and maybe you land on something that's more important for the stretch run. If you can find any level of confidence here in the next couple of weeks with Von Miller out and we'll see how long Greg Rousseau and AJ have are going to be out. Yeah. And you raise a great point. You know, you're not out there, you're playing minimal reps when everyone's healthy and all of a sudden you're thrown out there for 65 and 75% of the reps. And it's like, Hey, go make a play. It's hard to do that. Uh, was I underwhelmed with him, especially on Thanksgiving? Yes. I thought even in run support, there were times that he got too far upfield and he let uh, Jamal Williams or Deandre Swift uh, get by him and get some sizable gains at time times. But how is he going to get better? It's going to be the reps. It's going to be being on the field, learning from previous mistakes, watching the film the next day uh, with Von Miller out for in indefinite period of time uh, with the uncertainty of AJ Epinesa and Greg Rousseau. He's going to get some more reps these next few weeks, even if one or both of them come back this week. Uh, they're not going to be at 100 percent. They're not going to be playing 100 percent of the, of the reps or even 80 percent. So he's still going to get those reps. So. This is a good opportunity for him to learn and learn on the fly. The Bills invested a second round pick on Boogie Basham. Uh, they want to start getting some returns on that. So hopefully some extended playing time here will spark something in him where he'll be able to make some plays for this team in the down the stretch of the regular season and maybe even in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, Kyle Trimble also added some context. There's a question here about if there's a surgery required, what could that look like? Um, Great stuff from, from Kyle. He said in 2017, Charles Clay had torn his meniscus and missed three games with a surgery. Calvin Benjamin tore his in 2017 and missed two, de uh, deciding not to have surgery. And Cody Ford tore his in 2020 and had season-ending surgery. So there's literally a myriad of, of outcomes that we could be right. looking here with Von Miller, and we really won't know for a few more days. Yeah, and that's you know the interesting part. No player is the same in terms of the recovery time, uh, in terms of the surgery or not surgery. So it, it'll be interesting to see where he falls. Obviously, a player that has a lot of mileage, an older veteran. So uh, you hope for the best, but you, you we're just not going to know for a few more days. If you're hoping for the best, head over to Top's Carry Out Cafe. Hot to go, fresh, large, and cheese pepperoni pizzas right now, 14 bucks. The jumbo chicken wings, 10 count, $14. The legendary breakfast pizza, 20 bucks. Pizza or taco log, six count, $7.69. Baby back rib sections, $5.99 a pound. Sub sandwiches, wraps, apps, sides, and so much more. Visit topsmarkets.com slash red zone for the complete menu of ready to enjoy fan favorites. He's Ryan Talbot. I'm Matt Perino. There you go. Emergency pod in 23 minutes. We'll see you next time.